it's time for our, our speaker, but before we get her going up here, I'm just going to give you a, a brief bio. Uh, she's originally from the UK. She, uh, I don't know, how many of you have heard of Findhorn? Oh, quite a number of you. She herself lived in Findhorn for many years, and she, so she may or may not talk about that today, but uh, she's uh, she's been at Unity in Eau Claire, Wisconsin for a number of years, and she's just here on vacation, and we heard about her, and uh, so here she is coming down to speak for us, Helen Wright. Before we get started, mm -hmm. Helen has reminded me about lighting the candles. And we have a we have today's affirmation and the, today's candle of course is love. But first all right, so which one do I do first? We could do the pink for love. Oh. So the reading for this third Sunday here in Advent is on this day in Advent, where is my perfect place of service? What fills my heart with kindles my, my joy and my love? What gifts do I have to share? Love. Thank you. So, good morning and thank you so much for inviting me here. I'm really excited to be here. And um, I kind of hope that my talk, my message today, maybe has a little bit more life in it than when I was giving my talk to my cat, Earl. <laughs> he rolled over and went to sleep. <laughs> so the topic is the light of the world. I have to learn how to use my aid. And <laughs> the next slide is... Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glory your, glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. So Eric Butterworth describes the light of God as the potential in each of us, as being stored up potential of substance, of divine energy, and compared this with a piece of coal that has stored up energy from the sun millions of years ago. The coal can be returned to light and energy by combustion. Butterworth quotes Paul in his letter to Timothy as saying, stir up the gift of God which is within thee. He goes on to say that it was the mission of Jesus to help all people discover the light within themselves and to let this light shine. When coal is stirred up or activated, it releases energy. So too, when humans are stirred up through inspirational reading, worship, prayer, meditation, music, joy, sacred service, nature, beauty, love, or such like, then the innate divine potential is stirred up and our light energy is released. I've experienced being stirred up through spirit, and it feels like divine order, divine miracle energy, divine inspiration. And I've also felt being stirred up by something that's definitely not divine inspiration. <laughs> it's triggers, it's the busyness of Christmas out there, and it's the season that can perhaps trigger me at times. And that feels like anything I say other than divine inspiration. These agitations, feel like dissonance, and there are opportunities to be transmuted into the light. The reference in Matthew 6 to lighting a candle and placing it on a candlestick in the house 
is a reference to a big house that could hold three to five families. Those who were poor and had no butter were unable to light their lamps and relied upon their neighbors for light. In a peaceful house, neighbors would gladly share their light. This was not the case in a house where neighbors would not share and would even try to hide their light to prevent it from shining upon others. Butterworth states that in this powerful example, Jesus is telling us that we cannot hide our light, our spirituality, and our truth. He goes on to say that we should neither hide our light, nor be, or not, neither be overzealous about sharing it, but rather, a better way is to simply radiate our light and be the light radiating out into the world. And this radiation of light into the world is our God, God potential in expression. So when I was thinking about this talk, I was thinking about uh, the metaphysical meanings, and Butterworth has helped with that. And then I was thinking about this hiding the light under a bushel. A bushel is um, a basket, something like this, that would hold eight gallons, usually used for dry goods and we see them all the time at grocery stores. So I was thinking, why would people want to hide their light from other people? Why would they hide their light from another? And what came to me was a memory from when I was about 11 or 12, difficult years. And it was Christmas Day. Christmas Day at our house was normally um, spent by um, listening to the Church of England morning message and the morning service and my mum was cooking lunch and then in the afternoon at three o'clock we'd all sit down and listen to the Queen's speech. So it was in the morning, late in the morning, with the sermon um, and the sermon was going on and my mum was popping in to listen to the sermon and I hadn't heard about the Grinch stealing Christmas at that point but apparently me at 11 or 12 I ruined Christmas because my mum, I, I dared to challenge the sermon I, you know, the person who was speaking, the minister, I said, I'm not sure I really believe all of that. You see, you see the seeds of unity already were, were growing at that point. And just that one comment, and my mum just had a meltdown. Now, had I been my kind and compassionate self, I would have perceived that she was stressed um, about cooking the meal. She perhaps was seeking that one word of inspiration rather than having her teenage daughter challenging everything. But no, she stormed off to her room, I stormed off to my room, she said I'd ruined Christmas, and I, I was thinking, wow, am I that powerful? <laughs> and then I was also really upset of having upset my mother, but I was in that self-righteous teenage, I didn't do anything wrong, all I did was question. And so, guess what? The light that is, is in me, the light that is me, even as that child, especially as that child, <laughs> was under the bushel. And I think of how, how many times it's easy to withdraw. Um, we may, all may have triggers at the season or on a special anniversary. It's easy to withdraw, it's easy to put our light, cover up our light. And so that was really sort of my my sharing, really, of what, what came to me from that particular Christmas when, instead of the Grinch stealing Christmas, Helen ruined Christmas. Charles Fillmore, in The Revealing Word, states that in divine order, light always comes first into consciousness, and that light is the symbol of wisdom. So when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, he was saying that he was the expressor of truth and wisdom in all of its aspects. So what is light? Is it particle? Is it wave, as the scientists may study it? Is it consciousness, light and truth and divine spark within each of us? Then what about reflected light? As the sun gives us light by day, the moon gives us reflected light at night and helps us see, especially on the full moon. And today we have terms like light worker and light body. 
light worker may be a new age term, or it may be um, a term applied to many of us, including Reiki practitioners, those who work with the light and activating the light. So I'd like to explore those two terms and just give a brief overview. <laughs> the light worker, I found this definition by Rebecca Campbell, who is um, a writer and devotional artist. And she says that a light worker is anyone who devotes their life to bring light in the world. They understand that their actions, no matter how big or how small, have the potential to raise the vibration of the planet. A light worker's soul is awake, conscious, and their presence matters, and they are part of something bigger than themselves. And then, the light body. So I was thinking that we can all be described as light workers, um, consciously bringing our love and our joy and our light and passion to help the world be a better place. The light body. Again, this is a, a definition I found. Your light is a grid work of light, sacred geometry that brings together your physical, emotional, and spiritual being. The body radiates light energy and electromagnetically links your multidimensional self with the infinite universe. How beautiful is that? Um, Ruth is a teacher, healer, channel, um, and practitioner of metaphysical healing. Further consideration of the light body indicates that our atoms and subparticles of our body are light. As we reach into our higher self or superconsciousness and focus on the divine, so we radiate more light into the world and we radiate more truth and wisdom in the world. I was wanting, if any of you have seen the movie The Last Avatar with light sprouting out of his head and connecting with the universe, I was trying to capture that picture. However, the wonderful internet was saying no. So I found this, which I think is beautiful, showing meditation and the light. They've even proved um, in science that when we pray, our, our light energy changes. And I believe some people have been able to photograph that. So I'd like to explore this concept of our light bodies more and look at concepts of the inner chamber, the secret of the most high, meditation, prayer, the pineal gland, although sometimes called the pineal body. And it's found in the midpoint of the brain, so a line straight between my fingers, straight between my fingers through the third eye. That's where the pineal body is found. So, the pineal gland. Um, you know, while I have a grasp of, of this deep state of meditation and prayer, I was really couldn't help but consider what about the role of the pineal gland and what it's central in the brain. It's linked throughout history in many cultures with the concept of enlightenment. It's pine cone shaped. <laughs> and I invite you, anyone who hasn't got one, to have a pine cone from the back of the room at the end of the service or, or sooner. So pine cones show up as sources of illumination in churches, in candlestick holders, in lamps, um, in emblems, uh, crests, as a, a symbol of enlightenment and the activation of the third eye. In Rome, there is the court of the pine cone. Um, and then there's also the sacred staff so the Pope has a sacred staff, and on the top there is a pine cone. There's also an emblem or crest there that has the pine cone. So that's, that's seated in Rome. And then there are many other cultures. And if we have a blank slide, I think we might. Thank you. So in Egypt, um, there is the staff of Osiris, and that dates back to 1224 BC. And that shows interwining serpents. <laughs> and guess what? At the top of the interwining serpents, there is the pine cone for Osiris. It's also symb symbolic of the kundalini that rises up through the spine to the pineal. 
and um, the Hindu deities, um, particularly Shiva, is often pictured with her head coiled instead of that beehive style that many of us may remember from the 60s. She has the coil that looks like um, the pine cone, often with serpents around it. In um, another culture's tribute to the pine cone, symbolic of ascension and immortality, there's the Mexican goddess, and I better pronounce this correctly, uh, Chico Macodal. And she too um, is often pictured, it means seven snakes, and she's often pictured offering a pine cone in one hand and an evergreen in the other. The evergreen for eternal life, the pine cone for enlightenment. Um, we hear in the Bible that Jacob wrestles all night with God. And after that, he has a vision. His whole name is changed, indicating his whole transformation from wrestling with God. And J Jacob calls the name of the place Peneel. And metaphysically, Peneel means the face turned towards God or being with God the realization of divine presence. So I find it interesting that that name is so close to Peniel. Moving on from that, the, the pine cone is beautiful in that any of you familiar with Fibonacci and sacred geometry, um, your pine cones may or may not demonstrate this very easily but if you look at the base of them where they're taken off the tree you can usually count spirals clockwise and spirals anti-clockwise and this is sacred geometry if you count them um, often you can count them that one particular example and the numbers would come out with um, eight clockwise spirals and 13 counterclockwise spirals the fibonacci numbers are zero one one two three five eight 13, 21, 34. So we have sacred geometry in all of nature and especially in seen here in the pine cone. I got this from Facebook and it made me smile. I believe absolutely everything that's posted on Facebook. <laughs> so it's got to be right. So I like the sleeping human and I like the openness showing the enlightened avatar. Matthew says, he might have been referring to the pineal gland because he says, the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. And truth unity um, describes the pineal gland as the center of faith. And faith was our first advent candle. Um, so faith in the body of man that concentrates the thought on this center and opens the mind to spiritual faith. And our Advent candles. Um, light is really the message of Advent, the growing light towards Christmas, Christmas Day. So it's an integ integral part of Advent and we celebrate the life of the coming of the Christ child. The story of Jesus' birth is resplendent with images of light from the star of Bethlehem shining in the night sky to the shepherds tending their flocks when the glory of the Lord shone all around them. Earth-based religions celebrate the return of the light at the winter solstice. And everywhere we see celebrations um, of the light. We see Christmas lights. We see parades of lights, rivers of lights, light shows lighting the Christmas tree. The Advent wreath is round. <laughs> um, the Advent wreath is round, symbolic of our oneness and the circle of the ever-present love of God. The evergreens symbolize eternal life. There are four candles. There are four weeks to Christmas and four directions. The four candles are three purple, one pink. The pink, the third Sunday today, is pink for love. And then there's the center candle is white, and that's white for the Christ-like. The Christ light, the spiritual essence, 
the presence within, the, the Christ consciousness, and that's symbolic in that white centre candle. So our Advent candles, and I know that you on the first Sunday of December, you did Living Faith, and then comes Living Peace, and today is Living Love, then comes Living Joy, and then Christmas Day, the 25th, is the white candle for the living light of Christ consciousness. Living Faith, Living Peace, Living Love, Living Joy, of all spiritual qualities of God, of the divine, of Christ consciousness, and are expressed through and as the living light of Christ consciousness and spiritual understanding. So if I might lighten things up, so to speak, um, sometimes I see us as walking, as humans walking around with the light of our pineal, we look like walking candles, and the halo is the light of the flame of the, the candle. And uh, I like to remind myself of that image in the chaos sometimes out there. Uh, the bright light of the candle would be at the place of the pineal. And then, if we make light of things, um, we are spiritual beings. So, so there's not only the, the lights that are made out there, the Christmas lights and all of that. There is the light within and we can create more and more of that light within ourselves when we align with spiritual qualities. Um, in a short minute while, I'm going to be um, leading a meditation, and then at the end of the meditation, there will be a prayer. The prayer is by Patricia Cota Robles. Does anyone and everyone know of her? She, I, I describe her as a consciousness evolutionary. She lives in Tucson. She does so much free, free work all over sharing um, what she receives. And she receives messages from the illumined beings um, of truth um, on the higher realms of our existence. And she receives these messages. Her, um, her center is called eraofpeace.com. And she really, um, she has a message out at the moment which would take us till noon if I shared her message, so I won't. Um, but she said that we really, our light is really, really being called for. Our light is needed in the world today. Um, and we are being helped by the beings of illumined truth. There is so much light flooding into our earth, um, into all levels of our being. And that it's a beautiful time for us to open up within ourselves to more and more light. And that's her message. She has certain days, the 12-12 that we've just passed on Thursday, was a, an opening of portals of light coming in to illuminate and activate all of our DNA. So she's, she's calling forth our light and saying every one of us is important in bringing our light, especially at this time. Um, so we are all spiritual beings radiating the love and the light of the Christ consciousness in our hearts. And I would like us to affirm um, with actions, I am the light of the world. So if we can all say this, I, I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. And this light, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you. So if you just begin to prepare yourself for meditation, have a comfortable seat, feel your feet on the floor grounding you. And if you would like to, I invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable. Just focus on your breathing and following your own rhythm with the breathing. We're going to breathe into your heart and breathing out faith and peace. Breathing in 
the light of God, creator, source. And breathing out through your heart, breathing out that light. And continuing at your own rhythm, breathing in light, the divine light, the light that is you, the divine you. Breathing out that light and surrounding yourself in that divine light. Breathing in the light and breathing out the light to all of your neighbors here, all of your friends, your family, your unity family, spiritual family here in this room. Continuing to breathe in the light, the light of God. And breathing out the light to fill this whole sanctuary. Breathing in the light. Breathing out the light to fill the whole of Las Cruces. Breathing in the light. Breathing out the light to fill the whole of New Mexico, the whole of the USA and expanding to fill the whole of our world. Breathing out light as light. Breathing out light as love, divine love. Breathing out the light as truth. In every breath that we take, we are aligning our hearts, minds with spirit. And in every breath, we're grateful for the gift of life as we continue to breathe in the light and out the light. We gently enter into a moment of silence. We enter into that space within us, the secret place of the Most High, the inner chamber our own inner spiritual sanctuary. And we enter into the silence where we are one with the divine.
And then as you gently allow your awareness to come back to this room, to this space, this sanctuary. Just let these words, allow these words to just gently flow over and around you. I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of all humanity and with the I am presence of Father, Mother, God. In loving gratitude, I accept my gift of life and I ask my I am presence to consecrate every thought, word, feeling and action I express throughout this day with divine love and infinite, infinite gratitude for the opportunity to add to the light of the world. And so it is. Amen. Stuff up here. <laughs> Thanks for adding to the light of our world, Helen. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>